As a verified Twitch partner with at least a few hours in VTube Studio, I'm here to tell you how to get the most out of your VTuber model. If you find this video helpful, just be sure to smash that like button, click subscribe, and maybe share this video with some of your VTuber friends. Have you ever been watching a stream and suddenly the VTuber changes color? Or maybe they look like they're right outside your door caught on security camera. Well, if you have a model, you can do this too. Adding these customizations or edits can add a whole new level to your content. In this video, we'll be going over the three key elements to VTube Studio customizations, color, lighting, and VFX. First, a disclaimer. Not all artists and rig artists are okay with modifying the model. This is a hot topic, but just a heads up. Alrighty, so starting with color. This is a fairly simple process in VTube Studio. Click the pink gear icon to reach your settings. Next, at the top, find the person with the gear. In the side menu, you'll now see Customize Model. This will be your new home for the rest of the video. Let's start with Customize Multiply slash Screen Color for Art Meshes. This is where you'll change the color. This will pull up a list of your art meshes. Select the pieces you want to recolor, I'll start with the hair, and if the layers are not labeled and you're unsure of what part to change, click the eye icon, and it will blink red. When you found the layer you want, click the toggle and you'll have the color menu appear. Do you have a piece that is moving too much to select? Then just click the snowflake to freeze it while you work. Depending on what color that layer is, it may or may not look the best. This is because VTube Studio is overlaying a color on the pre-existing model colors. You may want to talk to your artist about getting an official recolor if it's something you really want. But, play around with the colors to make it look how you want it to. For this example, I'll try to make myself blonde. First, let me find the best yellow I can. As you can see, it's only adding a multiply effect, so even the most highlighter of yellow looks a bit orange being on top of the pink. But there's one more step. Click OK to apply, and then you have the screen option. Screen effects add a blanket of color over top of it all. I use this one the least because it can lead to a lower definition and loss of the line work. Click OK when you have the screen set, and ta-da! Now, just repeat this for every layer you want to change. Use the Paste Last Multiply and Paste Last Screen to speed this process up a bit. An important note, depending on how your model is rigged, you may or may not have the ability to select certain pieces to change. For example, on my old model, my sleeves were also connected to my shirt. There's one last slider to mention here. A very powerful fan favorite. The Transparency Slider. You can use it with recoloring, but for the most common use I see it is for making a bald toggle. This slider will change the transparency for layers, good for adding body props, hiding model features like wings that get in the way, or outfit modifications. You can use it the same way as setting color. Select the layer, slide the slider, and repeat. Now that you have your snazzy new recolor, Let's make sure we have it set up to easily use without having to go through that again. What you want to do is click the movie icon, scroll to the bottom of your existing toggle list, and click the plus. Hotkey action, art mesh color preset, and select. Lastly, click record settings and now you have it saved. From here you can either set a key combo or make a button on your stream deck. Up next, lighting. To start, in settings, click the camera icon and scroll all the way down to display lighting. Here you have a few options. You can either base the color off of your displays, whatever is on your screen, or off a static color. I personally use the static color, but play around with it. I've seen some pretty neat uses of the changing display lighting. To set the lighting to a static color, select the color wheel. I like to go for a light gray to mimic nighttime lighting. For lighting based on your monitors, choose your display, then select or deselect the circles for the different colors you want to pull in. Under color config, you can adjust the brightness to see how bright the color is, overlay to multiply a set color, and smoothing to smooth it all out. 
At the bottom, for display lighting, you can choose if you want it to affect items. Leaving this off will make items stick out compared to your model, so I personally recommend keeping it on. You may have noticed throughout the lighting section that my model's eyes and chain have remained unaffected by the lighting. To exclude pieces from lighting effects, go back to the Customize Model section where we did color, and instead choose Customize Scene Lighting for Art Meshes. Then, find the layers you don't want affected and slide the slider till it looks right. One means it's covered by the lighting, zero means the lighting is turned off on that piece. Finally, let's go over how to add those funky filters on VFX. Okay, so there are a lot of VFX options to choose from here, but you can find the menu right above the display lighting. First, you're going to want to activate it. Obvious, I know, but it will allow you to toggle the effects without being able to see them active. But, if you do have issues with high GPU usage, be careful. Having a lot of VFX can cause your GPU to go zoom. I encourage you to play around with these effects, but in this video, I'll be going over some of the more popular ones. Starting off with bloom and lighting effects, when paired with the model lighting, as we mentioned before, it can make things seem very atmospheric. All effects will have this on-off slider. This applies the effect, but also the intensity of it. Zero is off, and one is full effect of the settings. Here we can see as well that the meshes we toggled to be unaffected by the lighting are the pieces that have the streaks and bloom. Another fun one is lens distortion, or the ring camera effect. By cranking up the lens strength, you can get a neat fisheye look. Changing the squish will pinch or push the model. Kinda looks like that one potion seller meme. To wrap up, let's look at the line scanner to give that distortion redeem you may see on streams. Direction changes the bar start point. Scan steps is how many pictures are taken, with size being the size of each frame. Then you have the settings for the line itself and how frequently the scans will occur. You should set this higher for a larger pause. These VFX can also be set to a hotkey to save your settings. Under Hotkeys, make sure to select Load Visual Effects Preset. Setting this hotkey will allow you to easily swap between them or set the effects to Neat Chat Redeems. I hope this video helped you understand some of the fun customizations you can get out of your VTuber model using VTube Studio. If you have any questions or topics you'd like to know more about, be sure to leave a comment below. Be sure also to subscribe if you've enjoyed, as we are still pushing towards our 1k monetization goal. Anyways, Hope to see you sometime soon. Bye!